Okay, building an empire. Uh, this is the second lecture for Western Civilization One. This lecture, um, I'll discuss the origins of the Roman Empire in the Republic and how Rome adapted to ruling over others. First, I want to talk a little bit about the foundations of the empire and how Rome was able to consolidate its power on the Italian peninsula. Now, the Romans were able to consolidate their power through two main methods, through the making of alliances and through the extension of citizenship. Early Rome, fairly uh, a small city-state, in order to protect itself from the various powers that um, were on the peninsula, made alliances with other Latin-speaking um, cities on the peninsula. Eventually, they were able to come together as one and create a formidable army to begin conquests up and down the peninsula, um, eventually conquering the peninsula, and then their, the consolidation of their power included the spreading of Roman religion and culture through their conquests. Um, further consolidation also included the uh, construction of roads. Roads actually become essential to running the empire uh, for communication purposes, for the moving of goods, for trade, and most importantly for the movement of the army um, to get it from one end of the peninsula to the other. Now another thing that helped consolidate their rule is the, the Romans um, they extended citizenship to all Latin speakers this is different than the Greeks, who tended to exclude other groups of Greeks um, from other city-states, city or they would exclude um, those who weren't part of the elite. Um, so you were excluded by social class if you weren't a landowner. Um, the Romans were much more inclusive in this way. Um, this is what set them apart from the Greeks. And it allowed them to unite their alliance of city-states into an empire, the early empire being just that peninsula. And eventually they extended citizenship to the entire Italian peninsula, um, regardless of language, though the majority of them did in fact speak Latin. Um, but Roads were also essential to this. As I said, roads actually helped the building of culture. Roads helped unite the empire militarily, economically, and culturally. Ideas were able to spread along the roads. Uh, they were vital to communication in the empire. So this is really, really how the empire first starts to grow. The next stage of Rome's development is the Punic Wars. How did Roman expansion change beyond the Italian peninsula? Now, you can see here the, the early Roman Empire in red was just the Italian peninsula and then they've become a major power now on the Mediterranean. and their rise um, brought them into conflict with other major powers on the Mediterranean. Most importantly, uh, the power of Carthage. Carthage had been a, um, at one time, the greatest trading city, province of the Phoenicians, who were a great, a great trading state um, from the Middle East from what is uh, now the nation of Lebanon and par parts of Syria and even uh, Israel. Well, Carthage grew out from that and they 
They were the closest dominant trading state in the region, and they saw Rome as a threat to their economic strength, to their economic well-being. And there was a series of wars fought, three wars fought between the Roman Romans and the Carthaginians. And they're known as the Punic Wars. Now, they get this name Punic because, um, as I said, Carthage was a Phoenician uh, colony, a Phoenician trading state. And the Latin word for Phoenician, which is the Romans would have known the Carthaginians as Phoenicians, the Roman word or Latin word is Punicus. And that's where we get the name for Punic Wars. Well, the first of the three wars was in 264 BCE. Um, it was fought between Roman Carthage over Sicily, right here. Now, um, Sicily was, and it, it really is, uh, of strate strategic importance. Um, and Sicily back then was important strategically, most importantly for Carthage, because of trade, trade in the Mediterranean. And if the Romans were to get that, that would interfere with the trade routes um, that they, they profit greatly from. Rome wins. And this kind of emboldens Rome further um, and helps bring about the Second Punic War. Um, Rome actually starts this war, but it, the war is um, most well known for the personality of Hannibal, the Carthaginian leader who leads his armies um, over across the Alps, uh, famously with with elephants, and um, it really puts Rome on the defensive. Um, both both sides had a series of alliances. Um, but Rome started to lose a lot of their alliances because they were losing quite a few battles. They, the, the Romans were really in dire straits. Um, at one point in the Second Punic War, um, and ultimately what the Romans ended up having to do was cut off the main supply, um, basically attacking Iberia or Spain um, attacking the, the Carthaginian uh, province there and cutting off the manpower um, that the Carthaginian army needed to survive. And eventually uh, the Romans are able to chase, uh, chase Hannibal back into North Africa and they ultimately defeat Hannibal at Zama the Battle of Zama, and they they really they force Carthage to um, pretty much become a minor, fairly insignificant state after the Second Second uh, Punic War, and then eventually when we get to the last of the Punic Wars, it ends in fourteen. Or, um, I'm sorry, it ends in one forty six B C E, and Carthage is defeated. This too is initiated by Rome, and at this point, it's just Rome finishing the job. Um, Rome did not extend citizenship to all Carthaginians um, like it did in the Italian peninsula or to the Latin speakers. It just uh, the Romans just extended citizenship to members of the elite social classes who agreed to the surrender to the Romans. Um, so by this point the Romans had ex extended their rule quite significantly not just the Italian peninsula but northward here throughout Iberia or Spain and into North Africa. Um, this eventually leads to additional conquests. These later conquests after the Punic Wars, well what were the economic impacts of territorial con conquests after the Punic Wars. Um, Post-Punic War expansion included the acquisition of Macedonia, Gaul, 
Spain, um, the, well, the rest of Spain, um, not just the southern portion, uh, North Africa, uh, beyond what was Carthage. And citizenship, again, was extended to some, uh, and just the elite, it wasn't extended to all. Um, and what happened was the Romans um, often enslaved those that they conquered. Uh, the majority of people in these places that were conquered, um, they were seen as being too different from the Romans to be a part of their system. And Roman rule meant for them that they would be enslaved. Um, enslavement of conquered peoples in ancient in the ancient world was very common. Um, this had been done from the very beginning. The, the Mesopotamians did it, the Egyptians did it. Um, but the numbers of slaves um, created by Roman conquest was very considerable. Um, and so there was a very, very large slave population available. Um, and one of the things with many of these conquests um, required the services of the army. Now, the way the Romans ran their army was the Roman army uh, was initially, it was a volunteer force. Um, uh, of, and what happened was, is when it was time for war, many, many of the Romans would go, they gave their services to the Republic and they went off to war. During that time, their land was left vulnerable. And it was during this time, during Roman expansion, that many of the upper classes, the patricians who did not go to war, oftentimes um, consolidated their land holdings by taking over the land that was left by the landowner who went off to war. Um, it, oftentimes, I mean, it would seem corrupt, and it was, but you could easily come back to your land and be forced off of it and told that it wasn't yours anymore often because members in the government um, would negotiate deals to get that land out from under you. Um, so you, you had members of the patrician landowning class who consolidated their landholding, and that this forced many um, Roman citizens who had landholdings into the cities, it led to the growth of the cities. Um, he, now you think, well, why, why couldn't they just be employed on the farms? Again, these conquests um, brought in large numbers of people who were enslaved. So there was a large slave population. And that was usually the motivation. Uh, conquering land would lead to uh, a large population of people who would be enslaved, who could then be used for the purposes of farming. And really, this, this type of farming that utilized slavery uh, was really what drove the Roman economy. But it also meant that the Romans would have to continually expand in order to um, maintain this. Um, you know, eventually there, there may come a time where, where the, those populations ran out. And, and one of the things that does in fact happen was is when the Romans start extending citizenship further because the extension of citizenship will be something that the Romans will use to consolidate their rule to um, really tear down the barriers and cause people to want to be Roman. Those will be the same things that will work against the Roman Empire because economically their economy actually depends on slavery in order to keep things going. Um, and again, Roman roads also become even more important. And these roads get extended further. Now, many of these roads are actually built by the Roman army. 
they, they go through moments of conquest followed by periods of relative peace. It's during this time um, service in the army. The, the army will go and start building these roads. When the army becomes more of a professional force and not a voluntary force, um, what they'll do is m many members of the army will be serving their 25-year tour. Well, during most of this tour, you may see a couple of battles here and there, but most of your time is spent building, and whether it's building aqueducts or other buildings or roads. Um, roads, most importantly, will be really the lifeblood of the empire. Now, alliances. Alliances are a very key aspect of the growth of Rome um, beyond simple conquest. How did Rome expand its influence without conquering land? Now, there are not enough Romans to meet uh, the needs of the army. Um, simply in the early years of the empire, they can't can't conquer all this land uh, with the number of Romans that they have on hand. So what they do is they sign military alliances with other kingdoms in and around their empire. Um, in fact, for example, Germanic peoples would fight alongside the Roman army, not in the Roman army, but alongside the Roman army against common foes in, in, very, in localities in the north. Um, Rome often supported its allies in conflicts with local neighbors. Now there were some allies of the Roman Empire that found it difficult um, difficult to rule without Rome. Uh, probably the best example would be King Herod of Judica or Judea as it later becomes known as King Herod uh, King Herod of Judica um, had an inability to run his state. And what the Romans did with territories like this was essentially take them over and leave that ally in place as a nominal head of state. So someone like King Herod essentially became a puppet leader or Judica became a puppet state of the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire essentially ran it um, with someone else as really the face of that region. Sometimes an ally would go to war against Roman wishes. Um, and in this case, this would oftentimes force Rome to go to war with that former ally and then acquire their lands. Best example of this would be Jugurtha in North Africa, um, which leads the Romans to go to war with them and then take over that land. The other way that the Romans expanded was through the use of citizenship. What role did the right of citizenship play in the expansion of the Roman Empire? Now, its role was mainly in consolidation of their rule. The idea of extending um, citizenship, this right of citizenship, gave people some degree of ownership or connection with the empire. But the Romans, Romans were not too keen on extending it to non-Romans, to non-Italians or non-residents of or to those who did not live on the Italian peninsula. And they generally limited, limited citizenship to those people who were seen as most like the Romans. Um, and then later on, with the development and professionalization of the army, um, citizenship was offered after 25 years of military service. And then... Later on in the empire, they, they start extending citizenship to all men in the empire, but that comes in much later. And then this is seen as a way of, of consolidating rule in the empire by essentially pacifying the people 
and making them feel as though they belong. That is all for this lecture. If you have any questions or comments, please go to the general discussion boards, which you can find in the general files on the class page.